Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for Songs from Papua, My Homeland. The West Papua Project, which is hosting this concert in collaboration with the Chow Chak Wing Museum at the University of Sydney, is located at the University of Wollongong. As such, I would like to acknowledge country using an acknowledgement drafted by the University of Wollongong's Aboriginal Advisory Group, which has been endorsed by the Indigenous staff at UOW. We acknowledge that country for Aboriginal peoples is an interconnected set of ancient and sophisticated relationships. The University of Wollongong spreads across many interrelated Aboriginal countries that are bound by this sacred landscape and that have intimate relationships with that landscape since creation. From Sydney to the Southern Highlands to the South Coast, from freshwater to bitter water to salt, from city to urban to rural settings, the University of Wollongong acknowledges the custodianship of the Aboriginal peoples of this place and space that has kept alive the relationships between all living things. The University acknowledges the devastating impact of colonization on our campus's footprint, and we commit ourselves to truth telling, healing and education. Now, I realize that as this is an online event, we will be viewing from many different Aboriginal countries and perhaps even countries outside of Australia. And so I ask that we all take a moment to acknowledge the first peoples and cultures of the country we are on. I would also like to pay my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the audience and to leaders past, present and emerging. Now, if I may, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce the West Papua Project at UOW, which Ronnie and I, two of your hosts this evening, represent. The West Papua Project was established at the University of Sydney in the year 2000 by Professor Peter King, Dr. John Onduame and Dr. Jim Elmsley. And this was at the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies. And as its, um, original, its original patrons were Dr. Meredith Bergman and Tim Flannery. And the aim of the project from its outset was to pursue and to share research into the profound conflict in West Papua and to promote dialogue between various West Papuan factions and between the Indonesian state and West Papuan people. Since then, the project has been responsible for producing many reports, academic articles, conferences, and books. The project played a critical role in the unification of Papuan civil society and resistance groups, culminating in the creation of the United Liberation Movement for West Papua in Vanuatu in 2014. And it continues to pursue the goal of peace with justice in West Papua and is proud to include many leading Papuan, Indonesian and international scholars and activists. In 2021, the project moved from Sydney Uni to the University of Wollongong under the leadership of Ronnie Kareni, Jim Elmsley and myself, and we launched the project in May 2021, followed by a seminar and this exhibition and performance is the next project that we have embarked on. Your hosts tonight, as I've said, are Mr. Ronnie Kareni. Ronnie is a Canberra-based West Papuan activist and musician. He has a degree in diplomacy from the ANU and is one of Australia's leading spokespeople on West Papuan issues. We're also joined by Dr. Michael Webb, who is an ethnomusicologist. He grew up in Papua New Guinea and he specializes in the music of Melanesian communities. He's also a research affiliate of the University of Sydney where he was based until 2021 as an associate professor. And um, finally, myself, I am a, a, an ethnographer. I am a lecturer at University of Wollongong, and I coordinate the West Papua Project. Thank you, Kemi, for the wonderful introduction there. And I also would like to take this opportunity to uh, pay respect from the Nanawal country here from where I'm speaking to you guys through this virtual space and thanking everyone for, the, for tuning in into this virtual space to hear songs and discussions um, from the land of Papua. To begin with, I will take this opportunity to introduce the West Papua National Anthem composed by uh, the Dutch missionary, uh, Reverend Isaac Samuel Kenye during the 1930s. And this year in 2021, the National Anthem alongside with the Morning Star flag will mark the 60th anniversary. And it is timely that um, uh, we wanted to um, share this song 
the national anthem with you, everyone. And there will be subtitles that will go underneath. So during that moment, people can sing along. Uh, the song is written very poetically of the beautiful land, ocean, and people of Tana Papua. And this song itself as well, um, it will be accompanied with the music played by one of the West Papuan legend, musician, artist, producer, Benny Betai from the Black Brothers Band, who were famously known in the region in the mid seventies in Indonesia, which um, later he, there was a piece of a song that really um, forced the, them to move to uh, out into exile, as well as um, the band itself and the movement and the songs that are in those messages. So it will be accompanied with this national anthem. So for now, um, take a moment uh, to enjoy the West Papua national anthem called Haitanaku Papua. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a beautiful national anthem. Thanks for the introduction, Ronnie. And I hope that West Papuans get to sing that national anthem in their homeland together again in the not too distant future. Next up, I'd like to introduce Sixta Mambo. She is a proud Canberran based West Papuan woman and a mother of two beautiful girls, Zara Jane and Clarita Vonnie. And I've had the pleasure of being friends with Sixta for the past probably decade or so. Sixta is a daughter of a highly respected West Papuan independence leader, John Mumbor, and she's the sister of renowned journalist, Victor Mumbor. And the family is from the Mumbor Islands near Manakwari, which is a birthplace of a people well known for their poetry and their writing, including songwriting and music making. So in continuing the legacy of her father, Sixta is now going to perform for us a spoken word piece titled A West Papuan I Am. And this piece was inspired by her dad and penned by fellow West Papuan Frank Makanui, who is based in Papua New Guinea. Sixta is accompanied with the track Akai Bipamare, a rendition which is performed by the Black Orchid String Band. And this particular track is from the Mimika area in the Fuck Fuck Regency, and it's about youth and the future generations of West Papua as the hope of the nation. And it encourages youth to be vigilant contributors to their villages, then to prepare for the statehood of West Papua. So over to Sixta. With every breath I take, with every beat of my heart rate, I shall declare who I am. 
with everything I make, with every step I take, westward I sway, homeward bound, a West Papuan I am. When my feet touch the ground, with my fist clench into my chest, I will pound. In my homeland, I shall be found. In glittering splendor and great glory, truly indeed, it will be. A beautiful story. A West Papuan, I am. I promise to stand tall. With every smile, I will recall photos and moments on the memory wall. Out of the streams of dreams to be free. There I shall prove to be a West Papuan I am. Each new day, each new dawn, the morning star will shine. Time approach, surpass, fade, and holding still. The sunset will shine amid the shadows, revealing silhouettes of identity. Forever, for eternity, will be what I always be, a West Papuan I am. Very powerful spoken word performance. Next up, we're uh, going to hear Oridek Up, who is the head of the United Liberation Movement for West Papua's EU mission. Oridek is also coordinator of the Free West Papua campaign in the Netherlands. It's a great honor to hear Oridek share the moving story of his father's last song. After he'd been mysteriously detained for four months, the legendary West Papua musician and ethnologist Arnold Up was found on a beach near Jayapura, West Papua, on April the 26th, 1984, riddled with bullets and stab wounds. Arnold Up's family, including Oridek, as a child, was in hiding. His fellow Mambasak musicians forced, were forced into silence or exile, and his legacy was lost in a blazing inferno. His crime? Singing and keep, keeping his people's culture alive. As Oradek describes the last moments of his father Arnold's imprisonment, the poetic words he sings remain to this day a vision that many Papuans believe will become a reality. Josuba, my name is Oradek Up. Uh, I'm the firstborn of late Arnold Up and Kori Bukepot Pioper. My father is from Mandori, Numfo, and my mother is from Savendi Biak. After the assassination of my father in 1984, we were able to come and live in the Netherlands. Um, my mother have raised me and my three younger brothers on our own. We have lived for more than 36 years in exile, but we are grateful that um, over here we are able to express ourselves without fear of any form of persecutions. My father was more than just a musician, he was a freedom fighter. Like my father, I'm a musician too, but uh, when I was young, I wasn't actually um, interested to make music or even to get involved in our freedom struggle. But everything changed when I heard my father's last song, Mysterious Life, um, in 1984. That day when I heard his last song, it touched, it touched my soul, it touches my heart and I opened my eyes and I knew since that moment on I knew that 
I need to stand up for my people. So, so I did. I was 19 then. I was 19 years old then. I love to sing our songs, especially our own songs. When I sing our West Papuan songs, it always, it always brings me back to Papua. It always connects me with my people. When I sing our songs, I feel, I feel strong. I feel um, recharged um, because our songs tells everything about our country. We sing about our nature. We sing about our mountains, our rivers, our seas. We sing about hope. We sing about freedom. So that's why. That's why I truly believe that um, music is freedom and um, I truly believe that music is a weapon. We can use our music to simplify our, our, our story. And that's why I often use uh, combined music with storytelling because it helps to simplify uh, the complexity of our struggle. And I'm really convinced that music can help us to win the hearts and minds of people so they, they can understand when they know uh, where we are coming from. Hopefully, they will more um, be able to understand our freedom struggle. So that's why I believe that music is a weapon. And I'm grateful to be a small part of this. I'm grateful to to sing our songs for friends like you all. So, yeah, music is a weapon. I would like to share my father's uh, last song with you. Um, like I said, it's called Mystery Hidu, Mysterious Life. Um, this song is always a difficult song for me to sing because uh, it always brings me to his jail room. Uh, I can imagine uh, him singing this song uh, and making a recording uh, with a simple tape recorder. I can imagine uh, him being far away from his family and friends. This song was his uh, last song, yeah. his farewell song. Somehow he knew that he wasn't not he wasn't going to make make it alive so um, he shared the song uh, with his family but actually uh, this song is not only um, a farewell song to his family but also to his people but also uh, a, a word of encouragement for our people to believe in our in ourselves to believe in our struggle uh, to believe that we have the right to live as free men in our own land. So uh, this song is, is, is the spirit of a struggle. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm grateful that uh, even Indonesia have killed my father in 1984. His song is very much alive. His spirit is very much alive in the people because uh, activists, uh, students or even uh, the youngsters, the elders, they are singing this song as a song uh, of pro protest so um, it's a difficult song but uh, I'm honored to share this song with you uh, I've asked my wife Henny to join me here on the ukulele Mr. Hidup <laughs> Thank you. 
now my great pleasure and indeed an honor to introduce the next section, which is a conversation between Ronnie and a member of the legendary Black Brothers Band, formerly of Indonesia and several other countries in the Melanesian region and uh, also the Netherlands, uh, Benny Bete. The Black Brothers was a highly popular and successful fusion band which emerged in the mid 1970s in Indonesia. Their music, which was sung in Papuan languages, Tok Pisin, Bahasa Indonesia, and also Bislama, I believe, which is the pigeon of Vanuatu, included influences from rock and reggae and indigenous sounds and contained political elements inspired by the black power movement of the time. The band was the most popular and influ influential music group in Papua New Guinea during the 1980s. Uh, I happened to be living in Papua New Guinea at the time and remember their popularity vividly. The songs were always on the radio at the time, the big hit there was Nogat Mani, Nogat Kai Kai. Don't have any money and don't have any food. Um, they influenced many musical groups uh, in Papua New Guinea and uh, especially the prominent PNG band Sanguma. It's truly an honor and indeed a rare opportunity to have Benny share aspects of the band's musical journey, including how in the late 1970s, they were forced into exile from Indonesia and along the way in this next segment, he'll sing the song that saw them first rise to fame. So I'm here with Benny Betai, the bass player and also one of the original members of the legendary band called the Black Brothers. And I'll just dive in straight into um, having this conversation. So Uncle Benny, it's a honor to be able to sit with you here today in your wonderful studio. As you can see behind us, there's the Black Brothers record Platinum, it's gold. And we'll dive into that to have a bit of conversation, but also just the, the instruments here. It has a long history going back. So Uncle Benny, can you take us back to the 70s when Black Brothers first song that make hits in Indonesian music chart. What year was that? Oh, it was uh, 1977. And it was popular. That song was only uh, the biggest popular in Indonesia from 77 until now, today. So what was that song? They call uh, uh, Hari Kiamat. Uh, Hari Kiamat is what's uh, in English, uh, Judgment Day. Oh, yes. And so Judgment, Judgment Day song, it was released in 1977. 1977. It became a big hit, big hit in around in, in Indonesia. Yeah. And, and what was that song reflect? Uh, what was that song about? This about the, um, uh, the poor people crying and singing, no money, no uh, life is poor, uh, no, no, but we, we decided that we had to pick a song called uh, Hari Kiamat. And um, you know, it was popular in this because the, uh, a lot of people from uh, poor people there are black and so on. That's right. So in Bahasa, di tepi jalan, si miskin manjari, as loosely translated, Along the streets, people are suffering. Yes. Every time we go into the studio, well, we have to recording, we have to have like, their home. Uh, and we don't stay with the people, uh, kids, and uh, mama and the kids that are sitting in the corner and crying and ask money, ask for food, and all these people go and they have to go out there to do the song. It's amazing because the song is very prophetic and very poetic, which it speaks about life in general, which uh, Uncle you just explained of um, women, children, yeah. mothers, yeah. Um, begging on the side of the road during your time when you were in Jakarta yeah. and reflecting on the realities yeah. and yes. poetically written that song, which became the timeless um, song today and it also as you can see 
um, received the highest uh, honor and um, medal, especially through the music um, called Platinum here um, in, at the back of us here. And up on, it's two years um, when I look at it, um, 77, 78. Um, and that created some um, serious tension as Black Brothers become popular, well liked, well known in Indonesia for already what two years in a row. What happened after that? After the music became popular and it reaches throughout Indonesia and as far as West Papua, um, does that make it, uh, the band become uh, a threat to their state? And how is that music from them? From Ghana bring that to around to, uh, in the world. So we try to fight with Papua New Guinea and PNG to, to show that uh, we are from West Papua we are the, the second part in Indonesia. So we bring their culture, music, like uh, Dilunina, Parambo. Uh, because a lot of people in Papua New Guinea don't know, understand uh, how they so We bring their own culture. And then after from Papua New Guinea, we trip to Holland, uh, we play a couple songs. Uh, 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 what you call it? Um, in in Dutch TV, national TV, national TV about uh, traditional songs like uh, Kai Di and uh, Queen Bello. Because back then, the music that you guys were playing, the funk, yeah. the like it was already had a big influence from the negritude movement or the black American music. And you, like I can, I remember seeing the, the, the footage on the television and even now it's on YouTube, how the music of Black Brothers was already touching back all, in terms of current music in 21st century now, 30 years later, the music you guys played back then like uh, Bruno Mars or anyone, or Stevie Wonder, um, Prince, um, or Michael Jackson, or even Santana, their, their music, their brothers already played that back then. Yeah, we already played that, yeah, yeah. And then we played together with them, the same, same uh, stage with them, the first black people that uh, keyboard player in Beatles, uh, Bill Preston. Wow. Yeah, plays better in on the TV. And and you guys met Stevie Wonder. Yeah, and I send the us later, but uh, the respect and whisper for them never know that they were the Pacific band is gonna play like that. And then he send the us later and now I support you guys, can you guys come and visit me in, in America? Wow. Yeah. And that time we don't have a time, we just go down to the Pacific two two in the Pacific. Around in the Solomon Island, Nauru, and Vanuatu. Vanuatu. And we stay in Vanuatu for a couple of years. Yeah, the music in, in the Pacific, Black Brothers, it's still people remember. Many that are in their, now in their 30s or 20s, late 20s to 30s, even to 40s, um, remember growing up listening to Black Brothers and in the Pacific. Yeah. Black Brothers music still have a big impact and influence. So talk to um, our 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 audience. Um, the move to the to Vanuatu, yeah, and with the music, the message um, of West Papua and the culture, the identity that yeah. comes with it. Yeah, we bring we our culture and music with West Papua to Pacific. Uh, the, that time is 1983. We played Vanuatu Independence from Poland. And um, a lot of people from Vanuatu and PNG and Solomon Island didn't know how to play music. And then so uh, until today they said oh, only the black brass uh, show us how to play the music and now until today they can play regular music and they were, I'm very happy that what they very proud and the black brothers come down to the Pacific and show them how to play and I said oh, wow and never see the band from West Papua play like that. Wow. Yeah. So if the Beatles um, are known in Europe, um, the Black Brothers are known in the Pacific, and if Bob Marley is known in um, um, Caribbean and the rest of the world, 
uh, Black Brothers also had put make that mark, um, not just Pacific, but with the global outreach. And with that song again, um, Harik Yaman, there are Pacific artists and there are also other reggae band artists that has done a, a rendition or cover of the, the, the song Judgment Day. Um, do you know any of the artists that has played this um, the Judgment Day song? Yeah, I, I know. I, I heard someone say that, but I never heard a song to that because uh, it's for a long time. And someone said that, oh, they heard the other band from someone from Pacific scene. There, yeah, there is. And I, I know um, Kino from Big Mountain. It's yeah. a reggae band from the, the US. Um, did a cover with one of the Indonesian yeah. um, reggae artists. Um, and we will play a bit of that um, reggae version. But um, would you say that Black Brothers, through the song um, Hari Kiamat, have a global outreach um, in, and influence with yeah. young generation um, in West Papua um, through music like myself. Um, I'm, I've been um, very much inspired by um, the great musicologists, uh, musicians, artists from West Papua. Yeah. Um, so yeah, do you see there is that um, the influence and the global outreach of the Black Brothers movement itself? Yeah. Not just the band, but it has become a movement. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, just uh, last week I saw in the um, YouTube the other uh, the band from Solomon Island play Black Bear song uh, Walk About on Chinatown that uh, we met uh, when we come back from Vanuatu uh, to back to Holland before we come back. Uh, we make that song uh, Walk About on Chinatown. And um, we before that we, um, uh, we do music uh, Walk about in Chinatown, we uh, no got money, no got kai kai, so PNG too. <laughs> and there is one of PNG's song um, that Black Brothers made it popular, Jalikowe. Yeah. The arrangement is next level. Jalikowe is, um, we was in just short time in PNG and um, we heard the, the, the other band play, that's just uh, gospel, uh, like um, string band. Yalikoya, and we said, oh, we can take this song to, the, to do this song in, in Holland. And we practice in Holland, we do, yeah, that's why we play in, in, in Yalikoya in the um, TV in Holland. Wow, that's amazing. Now, um, I won't hold, hold you up, but perhaps you wanted to, um, to take us out, um, just to play a bit of the song Hari Kiamat. Yeah. And so, this is a special trip, it's a honor um, to be able to sit with one of uh, West Papua's um, legendary um, bass player from the Black Brothers, but also the founding member who is still um, alive and here, based here in Australia, Canberra, and we had the rare opportunity to be able to um, share with you the music of Black Brothers. And here is one of the soundtrack called Hari Kiamat that Uncle Benny will um, play a bit with us. Yeah. <clears throat>
Well, what a treat to get to hear from the Black brothers. And next up, we get to hear from the Black sisters. The Black sisters are an extraordinary trio of sister musicians whom I had the opportunity to um, travel with several years ago when they performed at a musical festival in New Caledonia. The sisters were born into a movement that was predominantly male led, both in music and in politics. And um, they are a persuasive and powerful force in, in changing that trajectory. They are the daughters of the late August Rumwarapan, lead singer and guitarist of the Black Brothers, alongside Uncle Benny Bataille, whom you just heard from, and they perform to keep their father's memory and legacy alive. Their music, a sampling of which we're about to hear, combines island reggae with soul, as well as with more traditional sounds and stories, and with language from Biak, their homeland. The sisters are fierce, they are fighters, their voices are gifts to all who listen, and their politics are sound in both senses of the word. Arriving as children with one of the first West Papuan refugee families in Australia, the sisters musically communicate the journey of living a life in exile. Here they are. Tonight we have Petra and Rosa, along with guitarist Luke and the sisters' children, Augie and Insos Mariana. Hi everyone, my name is Rosa and I'm from the Black Sisters. I just like to say thank you um, to the Songs of Freedom Project for having us and giving us this opportunity to share our story and to sing a couple of our songs with you. Uh, basically, just a little bit of a background. We are the next uh, generation of the Black Brothers. Um, our father, August Rumoropan, was one of the lead guitarists and lead singer. Um, basically, the Black Brothers family, as well as our parents, um, fled West Papua back in the late 70s to Holland, where I was born. Uh, we lived there for five years and migrated to uh, Vanuatu, where Petra was born, and now coming to us to Australia where our kids have been born. Um, being the next generation of the Black Brothers uh, band, the music has been obviously the most powerful tool and um, such a journey uh, for us until today. Uh, that's why, you know, we've continued continued this music and, and um, the message for Free West Papua because we have a we have a legacy to uphold and to continue and also for the next generations, uh, which will be our children. Um, being women who are living in, a, in Australia where we have the freedom to express ourselves, um, we don't take this uh, for granted. We do you know, use our opportunity um, whenever we're on stage here or around the world. Um, we use this uh, time to to be a voice for our women who are back home, who don't have a voice, who don't have um, the chance and the rights to express themselves and how they feel about um, a free West Papua. Um, so continuing um, music and the struggle and being women who have a voice that can express, uh, you know, it's something that we um, are very passionate about and will continue. Um, West Papua, we have a very, very rich culture. Um, you know, the likes of Arnold Up and Mambasak, they have, they have um, music and written music um, in our mother tongue that have such a big influence um, in West Papua. And even um, for the Black Brothers and, and our, our band, ourselves, Black Sisters, we, um, we definitely um, appreciate um, the path that they've opened for us as well um, to continue this journey. Um, through music and uh, you know just um, today we're really really grateful to have this opportunity to be able to share um, two songs with you um, the first one will be a Black Brothers original uh, which is called Border Crosser uh, which is the same song uh, we haven't changed it up but we have put a little bit of our own um, sort of flavor into it um, and that song is um, border cross that pretty much just tells you about uh, you know the the story of black brothers co uh, crossing the border um you know having the government call us refugees and all of this and that we're fighting for freedom um but that song is just about getting to the next place getting to where the next journey will be to to keep um to keep this struggle alive 
Um, and the second song we'll be singing today um, is called Biak Mioskaru, um, which is actually written by our father's brother. And uh, this song um, explains uh, pretty much how we are grateful for the land that we've um, we've lived in. We're grateful for um, the culture that it's shown us um, and that we can always go back, which is, um, which I know for me, it's how we all feel um, being people that are living in exile who can't go back to a free West Papua. One day we will, and um, we'll, we'll never lose hope. So today we just will be singing these songs with our amazing guitarist, um, Luke, and also sharing um, uh, this day with us will be our kids, uh, my sister's my sister's daughter, um, Insos, Insos Korwa, and um, my son Augustinus Kart. <laughs> Oh, my. 
Wow, what a treat. And I'm sure everyone has followed these amazing acts and um, the music so far, the stories about the struggle and the struggle uh, in the message of all the songs. And, and if any, um, I, I know that, you know, there's something that will, will be resonating with us on how the power of music um, play a big role in the self-determination struggle of West Papua. And now it is also uh, a privilege to introduce the Black Orchid String Band. And the Black Orchid String Band is comprised of the West Papuan asylum seekers and the activists now living here in Australia. Uh, the group was established in 2011 to continue the legacy of those the great musicologists Anolap and and the likes of uh, the Black Brothers and many um, who have used the music as a medium or as a weapon uh, to advocate on the everyday struggle of West Papua and sustain that musical cultural identity in diaspora to date. Um, that, the 10 piece string band includes traditional bass sounds, the ukulele sounds, tifa drum, and the vocal harmonies, um, which representative of the spirit of the national unity in the freedom struggle. 
So most of the songs performed uh, sung in various dialects, as well as the Tokpisin, uh, PNG national language. And the songs, basically also it's celebratory. And speaking of celebratory, um, this particular song um, that the Black Orchid will be uh, presenting, it's called Yapo Mama Chicha. It's have that celebration um, of um, this reflecting on the, the realities despite the difficulties, the hardship, the challenges, yet that positive spirit, the positive message and the music that really continues to bring and give that hope and the freedom alive. So enjoy this song, Yapo Mama Chicha. the musical journey around West Papua and through its diaspora, brought to you tonight by the West Papua Project at the University of Wollongong in collaboration with the Chow Chuck Wing Museum at the University of Sydney, and by the ARC Linkage Project Music, Mobile Phones and Community Justice in Melanesia, which is one of our sponsors. Just a minute ago, in the, the last song that we heard, Yapo Mama Chicha, we actually got to hear um, from Joe Wally, one, a musician, but I'd also like to give him special thanks for his audiovisual skills. He's been the producer of this performance, this musical experience that um, you've been listening to tonight. I'd like to also give a special acknowledgement to Ronnie Kareni for coordinating and directing the event and to say that we are honoured to have been able to open this Pacific Views exhibition. And we thank Jude Philp and Stephen Gagau for this opportunity. Thanks also to the generosity of the musicians who performed for us and shared with us some of their experiences, their background and their hopes for the future of West Papua. Please stay tuned for a Q&A with your hosts and Papua Merdeka. Soaring above and 
Whoa.